Hi guys, this is Dimitar Christoph Jimmy from Chaos Group and in this video I want to talk a little bit about rendering hair with V-Ray in Softimage. As you can see I have this a simple example here and I have already rendered it out. Here's this furry guy uh, that I made purple for some reason. So uh, if we check the shader uh, you'll see that I have the V-Ray hair material. And uh, I'm not going to go to a real in-depth explanation about the separate settings. Uh, I would rather show you what the settings are about and then uh, show you an interesting workflow that you can use in um, Softimage. However, if you want to get uh, a better understanding, you can actually check our uh, online help file on uh, Spot3D and uh, read about the different settings and an in-depth explanation about each of them. So uh, the basic settings, however, are actually pretty simple. We have several layers. We have a diffuse layer, then we have uh, two different types of uh, specular layers, and then we have a transmission layer. So uh, the diffuse part we're going to use for um, for the things that are not so reflective, for example, some rugs or carpets or really dirty hair. Uh, but actually, um, real hair in fur uh, is very reflective, and that's why we have two different kinds of specular. Basically, we have the primary specular, which is the first type of reflection, when a ray hits the hair and is immediately reflected by the hair. And then we have secondary uh, specular, which is um, the secondary reflection, which is a ray hits the hair, it goes inside the hair, and then it's reflected from the inside part of the individual strand. And it's reflected back to us. So that's why we have uh, two different kinds of specular reflections. And this basically allows us to uh, blend those and have different colors and create really, really uh, interesting, interesting effects you'll see uh, later in this video. Uh, those, of course, both the primary and the secondary reflections can uh, be blurry reflections. So as you can see in my case, uh, the primary has a glossiness of 0 0.8 and the secondary uh, specular has a glossiness of uh, 0 0.5. So the secondary is more blurry. And then uh, we have this transmission cover. And the transmission cover is responsible for this effect that you can see here, where the hair is actually very thin. And in the real world, um, the hair is translucent. Actually, if you take a look at the... Uh, uh, thin strand, it, you can actually see the light passing through it. And here when the, where the thin, uh, the hair is very thin, we can actually see the same effect. This is because I have a large area light in the back and the light from the area light is coming through the hair and uh, getting this uh, nice rim light effect here. So obviously when I make this color brighter, this becomes uh, more transparent. And uh, the cool thing about this transmission is that it has uh, two types, types of glossiness. So it can stretch the speculars uh, along the length of the hair and along the width of the hair. Now this is the basic setup, and, but what I want to do is actually show you a more interesting approach and a more interesting method of shading here with V-Ray in soft image. So I'm going to click on the original geometry here. And what I want to do is actually paint some vertex colors. So I'm going to do this, uh, go to property, uh, Paint, Vertex Paint, and uh, Brush Properties. So now uh, I'm just going to randomly uh, draw some colors on my uh, guy here. Uh, there is no um, higher purpose here or any very special idea. I just want to point out the, the workflow. Let's say this is pink and this leg is also pink. And uh, I'd rather have more green here because it looks better. Okay, so uh, I have drawn my vertex covers, and now what I want to do is transfer those vertex covers to the actual hair. To do this, uh, I'm going to need um, to see the tree here, not this one. And uh, find this uh, mesh, and find the uh, vertex cover. Uh, this is locked, so I'm now going to select my hair. Uh, Go to the hair tab here and find this transfer map. So I'm going to transfer the vertex covers from the original mesh to my um, uh, hair there. Okay, so now the, the vertex uh, covers have been transferred to my uh, uh, to my mesh, and let's see what we can do about shading. Okay, this is my render tree. This is my hair material, and uh, what I need to find is cover map lookup. Here's the node that I need, bring it in here, and I'm going to connect it to the primary specular. And here in the node, I'm going to select that I want to check out the vertex colors of my uh, of my hair. So basically, let's hit render and uh, see what's happening, and I'm going to explain it as well. What this is doing is that uh, uh, this node here is actually getting the 
a color from my vertex uh, painting, the painting of my vertex uh, vertexes, and is uh, transferring this color to the primary specular of uh, my material. And as you can see, I'm actually creating this uh, uh, colorful character, very furry and colorful uh, character. So uh, it's a very simple, uh, very simple method, as you can see, but it actually allows us a lot of control when shading uh, fur, fur and hair with V-Ray. And actually, I can make things even more interesting, so I'm going to stop the rendering for now. And to do this, uh, I'm actually going to use one of the uh, V-Ray specific nodes. So let's find it, V-Ray hair sampler. Okay, the V-Ray hair sampler is a very simple node which uh, allows me to shade uh, my hair based on the uh, points uh, position along the, the length of the, str the strength. So I can give uh, one color to points which are at the beginning of the strength and different color to points which are far away from the strength or towards the end of the hair strength. So let's find the gradient and uh, you'll see it more um, easily and understand it easy this way. So what I need here to do is connect this output to the input here and then the output here to the secondary specular. And here in the gradient, I'm just going to pick the colors which I want to uh, blend with. So just random colors that I like. Uh, these are fine. So what is going to happen now? Uh, I'm going to explain it as it's rendering. What we get is this. Uh, we get the vertex color for primary specular. And then we get the secondary specular is this gradient which uh, uh, the hair has one color in the beginning and another color in the end. And it goes through this gradient. So we will see a very strange looking uh, shader. Uh, but uh, it's actually using those uh, uh, kind of networks you can create really, really complex uh, uh, network and, and shade your uh, characters really easily and uh, be very creative. As you can see, it's also uh, rendered pretty quickly and it creates really, in this case, very strange results. But uh, if you put your mind to it and use the hair sampler with an idea, you can actually uh, create really interesting things. For example, you can create... Um, a hair w which has been blonded, so the, the the hair is dark at the roots and then gets blonde towards the ends and uh, really strange and uh, interesting shaders. So uh, as you can see, uh, the V-Ray hair material is pretty easy to use and with the hair sampler note you can actually create more interesting results. Uh, and it's also very fast to render. So this concludes my presentation. Uh, until next time, I'm Dimitar Krstev Jimmy and I thank you for watching.